you. Okay, so our next speaker for today, uh, Joydeep Dutta, and uh, he will talk about bi-level programming today. So uh, please, Joydeep, you can start now. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nadia. And uh, I'm happy to see uh, so many old friends. And I am also lucky to be a COVID survivor. And uh, uh, I'm very happy there uh, people whom I worked with, Regina is there, Yalsin and there, Nadia and Julie, and I would never forget your hospitality in 2004. Um, and Alex is there. So this uh, talk is essentially about a personal journey. It is, though I will talk a bit about what others have done, but it's largely about the problems that I had been interested in and uh, the, uh, what I had uh, worked on with my collaborators. And so it will focus largely on that. Now, uh, you might be wondering that I have written by hand, but it takes a little hard work to write by hand. But I tried out this in one uh, talk uh, with students in India and somebody said, oh, it's pretty okay if, if you do that. Uh, so I just wanted to break the monotony of every time doing cut and paste on slides. And so what happened? So it's becoming too... Can this? Uh, can you see it now? Is a yes, we can. Yes, yeah. yeah. So bi-level programming is a two-level problem. You optimize at two different levels. There's a level one or the upper level, and there's a level two, which is the lower level. So upper level is usually called the leader's problem, and the lower level problem is called the follower's problem. It's based on uh, something called Stackelberg games, but I will give you a much better example. In the theory of moral hazards and unseen behavior, this is uh, by uh, James Mirrorless, Nobel laureate in economics. He actually shows how beautifully and naturally bi-level programming of this form arises. If I look at this bi-level programming, I have a function of two variables, two vector variables, X and Y. And where at the upper level, I minimize at X. And at, and at the same time, the variable Y is chosen from the solution set of a parametrized mathematical programming problem or an optimization problem where, the param, where X behaves as a parameter and Y is the decision variable. So this is uh, what is the basic structure of a bi-level programming problem. But one thing has to be very, very uh, clear here that at the upper level, we minimize with respect to X and the lower level, we minimize with respect to Y. Many, but when you read the literature, you have to be very careful that many authors would minimize on the upper level with X and Y. This is this problem, this structure, which is the most popular structure where we are minimizing both with X and Y comes up as what we call an optim optimistic bi-level problem. And there is re there are reasons for doing so. But in the paper of Mirless, he actually brings problems in this structure. Of course, for economists, you will have max here in both cases rather than mean. So here is the basic structure that F is called the upper level objective. X is the parameter space. Then you have the lower level objective, the feasible set map, the, this, this Y that you find in the lower level, the decision variable has to depend, the, the feasibility of Y depends on the choice of the parameter X. So it's like a leader who gives a value X to the follower and a follower has to return some value and based on which the leader would actually optimize. Now there are structural issues with this problem. The problem is that if for every X, the solution set at the lower level becomes singleton, then it's very easy to, not easy, I would say, at least mathematically, it's very easy to write down the final problem as this, that you minimize the function X and Y X. So it just becomes a function of X and you minimize over the X constraints, that's it. Now the <clears throat> problem is this kind of, situation can arise. In fact, 
if this is a strictly convex function in y such a situation would arise and if this if this is a convex set now very recently there has been a study of such kind of problems and algorithms were built and complexity issues were analyzed this was the first time such a thing was done for bi level programming from a group from princeton so but what happens if it is not single turn at every point then the final ob objective function would turn out to be set valued because then what happens that naturally for every given an x you have many y's been returned by the follower the lower level problem and all that y's can be plugged into the actual objective function of the leader the capital f objective function and that would give us an structure of this form that and this is a set valued map now one might say that okay this is not a good idea how will i handle set valued maps of course from a practical point of view there is there there are reasons not to um, not to uh, actually handle set valued maps but to avoid them but there is a study by alan zemkoho which appeared i think 2019 in set valued uh, analysis which speaks about actually handling the problem by methods of set valued optimization and that's the only paper which does that which really attacks bi level programming problem directly and he successfully showed that he could solve certain problem by that attack and that is i think is a very good application of set valued optimization which now of course has a huge literature but traditionally from an economics point of view you never want to have a correspondence or a set valued map which you want to optimize you really want to uh, do with standard natural scalar valued problems so there are two kinds of formulations here one is called the optimistic formulation another is called the pessimistic formulation so my work has been largely on the optimistic formulation what is optimistic formulation optimistic formulation is where the leader and follower has a very good uh, deal so if the leader uh, gives an x the follower return back and y such that that y would actually minimize the leader's objective so for every chosen x you need to really find do find y you really need to find the function phi not x which is the minimum value of fx y over all possible solutions y corresponding to that parameter x now then you minimize this phi not x over the x constraints and this is called the bi level programming problem in the optimistic form which i mark as bpo here and its solution is called the optimistic solution there is a pessimistic problem also so so for example uh, it could be that between lab labor unions and the this is where moral hazard would come in labor union and uh, the come the proprietor of the company say the, the industrialist so the industrialist would always like to maximize his productivity and because of some problem the labor union would give back those levels of productivity where his uh, productivity levels drop or, or where his profit levels drop so th those kind of things is called a pessimistic formulation of the problem where instead of giving back what is good for the leader the follower gives back what is worst for the leader so instead of minimizing fx y he gives back a, a y which maximizes fx y and this is what is called the pessimistic uh, formulation then you minimize this function the that maximum function and which is of course the the leader does know and then that is called the pessimistic problem the pessimistic problem has a mean max type of structure and is pretty difficult to handle only few real two papers i would say has really uh, got into the structural issues of this pessimistic problem uh, very recently not 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 very uh, so this is also uh, an area in which i would uh, like to really uh, have some contribution so if i look at the optimistic formulation the tempting idea is that because phi not x is like this right and i can now instead of phi not x put mean fx y y element of sx so in so what i can do that i can write down then 
I can, I'm tempted to write down this problem as minimize fx y over x and y, where x is in x, of course, y is in s x. So this is this problem. So is it exactly equivalent to, if I write it in this form, it is, is it exactly equivalent to this problem, phi not x? That is a very strange question in the sense that it might look, oh, this is just the same. If I just write it down, what I have done, I have instead of phi not x, I have written down mean of this. But the problem actually lies in whether the mean exists or not. That can cause a lot of problem. And so in some sense, this problem, the optimistic formulation, BPO, and this problem, which we call the optimistic bi-level programming problem, where many uh, authors, for example, JNEA uses this format as the struct, they call it itself as the bi-level programming problem. So how is the problem OBP and the problem BPO related? That's what's of interest uh, to me. Uh, so when 2004, so because it's a personal journey, let me tell you some part of the story. When I first met Stephen Dempe, and then he was telling me this uh, facts about when he was discussing this optimistic and pessimistic formulations, in doing so, he actually, at that time, I was also very curious to know, he felt that these two are same. And so that is why people always use this formulation. But we then said, no, 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 let, let us have a look. It could be that this minima is actually, the infimum is achieved, but there's no minimum, right? So what would happen there? So can, can they be really equivalent? So in 2006, we had a, paper which came out in a book actually of collected articles. So where there was this uh, assumption that if you have upper semi-continuity of the set valued map, which is the solution set map, this map S, which the lower level solution set map, then if you have a local optimistic solution, of BP, which is a lo local solution of the problem BPO. And let X bar Y bar be in the graph of S. That is, if Y bar is a solution of the lower level problem, when the parameter is chosen to be X bar, such that Y bar actually minimizes this capital FXY over Y element of SX. So if Y bar is the minimizer, that is phi not X bar is F of X bar Y bar, then X bar Y bar solves OBP locally, okay. So, but it was later I realized in 2017, making up some notes for the SIMPA school that this upper semi-continuity is actually not relevant. It's not required. It often happens possibly in mathematical research that you think some the condition would be required and possibly you have just missed looking at it in a very simple way. You might have looked at it in a slightly complicated way and that led you to add conditions which are really not required. So here is the crux that from a local point of view, that if I am able to solve the problem BPO, if I can solve the optimistic bi-level programming, bi programming problem in the optimistic form, and if the at given, given at that point X bar, the problem of solve in minimizing fxy over y element of sx bar has a solution at y bar, then x bar y bar also solves OBP locally. Now let us, let me tell you that why I'm talking about this BPO and OBP. Please observe that this BPO problem is not a very interesting thing to do. It's very not a very interesting thing to find this out by doing actual minimization. So it's much more interesting in the optimistic case to handle this problem directly. Now, so essentially this, instead of this, I'm using this as a proxy. Now the question is what these two theorems have shown that if I know that there is a solution of this, then under some mild condition, there is a solution of this local solution. Of course, these are local problems because I had just forgotten to tell you at the very outset, if you read Stephen Dempe's book, Foundations of Bi-Level Programming, then you'll realize that very, very, simple looking bi-level programming problems are non-convex, non-smooth problem in general. Even if the data is smooth, the final structure, the final feasible set would be non-convex. 
and it's a highly non-convex problem. So I, I have a proof here also, which is absolute. I, I, I sometimes break my head that why such a simple proof didn't come to my head in 2006, but it's very simple. But the real question is that I do not want to bother about solving BPO and OBP. No, actually I want to solve OBP and know whether I have solved BPO. That my aim is to solve BPO by using OBP as a proxy. So I have to know whether if I can solve OBP, I can, can I solve BPO? That, so that is, the, that is what we should be looking from. And here I figured out that it is not so simple. So if we consider S, the set value map, the solution set map to be locally bounded and graph closed, or even you can take it to be upper semi-continuous that will work, I'm sure, in the sense of Burge. So then if X bar Y bar is a local minimizer of OBP, and then X would become a local minimizer of BPO if S reduces to be single valued at X bar. See, when S reduces to be a single valued at X bar, it means that at X bar, it is also inner semi-continuous, it are lower semi-continuous as a set valued map. So this is a very crux point that if I want to come from OBP to getting BPO, I somehow have to have the set valued map S single valued around X at X star. And that's a very, very difficult condition. You cannot guarantee such conditions. In, as I will see, in the, as I go through the talk, that very soon you will realize that this inner semi-continuity is very much required if you have to overcome the challenge of writing optimality conditions for these problems. This is a hard problem, nested problem. So doing even writing optimality, necessary conditions for optimality becomes a challenge. So for the moment, let us just fix it ourselves on this problem OBP. And in this case, we will always choose that the lower level problem is convex, that this is a convex map for every X in Y, and K is a convex valued, uh, set valued map, which could be closed, compact, whatever. So essentially I can write down the problem the OBP problem as minimizing FXY subject to XY element of graph of S. So you might say, okay, once this is done, optimality conditions are very easy to get. It is nothing like minimize F over X element of X, but there are a lot of issues that come in, come in with this kind of structures. So the whole idea is to have a single level formulation. See, if you want to write optimality or you want to even do some computations on it, you have to get a single level formulations. Because bi-level formulation, in my uh, viewpoint, after so many years, is not a very well posed, not well, it is not a very good setting, right? So it's very difficult to handle that setting. So you have to get it back. So from a general point of view, if I look at the bi-level programming problem and I, with those assumptions, I can write OBP in this framework where SX is replaced by its optimality conditions. This is absolutely right because there is, this is, these two problems are absolutely equivalent because any solution of this problem would lie in SX and every solution of SX would lie here. That's will satisfy the optimality condition. So you will just take X equal to RN just for simplicity and this would be the nice problem, which is an optimization over generalized equations. This is already a class of problems, which is well studied and known in optimization for a long, long time. Another is a value function reformulation. The value function reformulation, which would be very helpful when we study optimality conditions is that here you think of being able to compute the value function of the lower level problem and then you write it down in this form. The problem here, this why this value function is important because as I'll show you as we go through the lecture, that this value function will actually tell you that these kind of problems never satisfy the manga sari and from which comes uh, constant qualification or the basic constant qualification. Observe that even if the data of this, all these functions, F, capital F, small f, 
are all convex in both the variables jointly. Still, once you write this problem, this will not be a convex problem because here is a constraint, which is a DC constraint. So this is, this is a very good reformulation, which will tell you that whatever you want to do, doesn't matter how good your data is, your problem is a non-convex problem. Maybe with, when you have convexity of, uh, of the function jointly, then you still have some structure like DC functions here. But otherwise, uh, this is not a very good thing because this, this VX computation is not so easy and computing uh, objects related to VX like subdifferentials are of, a, of a, another level of difficulty. So let us look at this problem, a very simple problem. You minimize x square, y square, the OBB problem. And you take y from Sx where you have this. Very simple problem. You might laugh at this problem actually. But these toy problems have a lot, lot to reveal as in any part of optimization that the solution set map can be clearly written down in this form. And then when you draw the graph of the solution set map, which actually becomes the feasible set of the upper level objective, the final feasible set, that graph is a non-convex set. And hence, the problem is always intrinsically non-convex. So let us take a more closer look at this problem. So we go to the same problem and let us calculate the optimistic version. Let us actually compute this phi naught x. If I compute the phi naught x, observe that this is what happens. Here, of course, you can immediately see from this problem that, okay, zero, zero would be the minimizer and that's, the, that's kind of it. And uh, here, if you see, here I can nicely compute the optimistic problem and the optimistic solution here is at x bar equal to zero. If we just draw the graph of this function, it is exactly like this. Now come to the pessimistic version. If you come to the pessimistic version, the same problem, the whole game completely changes. And that is why the pessimistic problems are so hard to deal with actually. So if you come here, you can realize that the solution should be somewhere here, but this, at this point, that, that zero point basically, you have the value one. So there is no pessimistic solution. The problem has a minimizer, but when it has an infimum, but it doesn't have a, have a minimizer. And that's the key problem where all these relations become into difficulty. I do not know that these relations have not been very keenly studied. And see, there has been a uh, the long back when I first saw the book of Luo, Pang and Ralph on mathematical programming with equilibrium constraints, 1996 book. So that they wrote in the very second or third page that gave an example of bi-level programming, the OBP actually. And they said that, uh, okay, fine, uh, guys, this is the, nothing but a special case of uh, MPEG problem or MPCC problem because you can do this KKT reformulation. If the lower level problem is convex, I can always replace it with KKT reformulation. So when I... Uh, Stephen gave me his book to read. I, he said that, okay, this is the way if you do the KKT reformulation, then it becomes an MPCC problem. And for MPCC problem, you can show that at no feasible point, the MFCQ would hold, even if you have smooth data. So I was pretty intrigued. I was intrigued because of the presence of this Lambda and also of the presence of the fact that there could be solutions. Suppose that lower level problem that is convex with, with Kx now described by convex inequalities. Then so you replace the lower level solution by KKT condition. But suppose for some Xs, you miss Slater's condition. For some chosen X, some given X, Slater condition is violated at the lower level. Then there could be solutions of the original problem. There could be solutions even of the lower level problem, which do not satisfy the KKT condition, then what would happen? 
then then what will i do with that will it give me a back a solution of the original problem and so is this really an equivalent formulation of obp well, even if the lower level problems are convex and uh, convex and smooth the answer turned out to be no and that is what uh, uh, both me and because of this failure of stuff uh, both me and stephen had worked on for quite some time we needed to really figure out uh, uh, our uh, examples to show that what pang ralph and luo had said uh, this paper came out in math programming in 2012 that bi level programming is a special case of mpcc and so we asked back the question is bi level programming a special case of mpcc so the answer was no bi level programming is not a special case of mpcc so all these uh, things that have been done that we, we have an mpcc and use techniques of mpcc to solve bi level programming problem falls flat in many many cases in many application so let us look at a problem where you have a global minimizer suppose you can find a global minimizer of the kkt reformulation and suppose later condition holds at the lower level for every x then x bar y bar is a global solution of obp now this is this you might say okay this is a very natural condition i would say okay it's a very natural condition but there can be very simple problems very pathological problems of what where this natural condition can go and then the relation between the two problems becomes really problematic so here is a very very simple problem again i'll tell you that you one would laugh at actually thinking about such problems but the problem is that these are very good uh, you know these problems are very good teaching tools so here if you look at this lower level y equal to 0 is the only solution x y equal to 0 0 is the only point where the kkt condition holds okay very good and x bar y bar equal to 1 0 is the only global solution of obp this problem has only one solution unique solution if i do the kkt reformulation of the problem so 0 0 is the problem where only point where the kkt for the lower level holds now if i look at the kkt reformulation the only feasible solutions of this problem are of the form 0 0 lambda but so 1 0 lamb lambda this cannot be a feasible point of the mpec mpcc formulation so any solution of this cannot be a solution of this and any solution of global solution of this cannot be a solution of this it's a very simple example but it demonstrates a very important fact the problem gets extremely difficult when you take local optima because local optima is the way to go because these problems you really have to rely on local optima if you can at all try solve them so suppose for the lower level problem we decide that okay we not put this notation for the set of lagrange multipliers associated with the problem so suppose that x bar element to x bar the slater condition holds for the lower level let x bar y bar lambda bar be a local optimal solution of the kkt reformulation for each lambda each lambda bar in gamma x sorry gamma x it will be gamma x bar y bar sorry lambda bar in gamma x bar y bar please pardon me for this then only x bar y bar is a local solution of obp look look at the restriction if this is this has to be a local optimal solution of the kkt reformulation for every lambda bar that you get here so there are uncountably many lambda bars and then possibly it's uh, in many cases there's no way you can verify it unless there's only one lambda bar and so unique lambda bar and there will be no unique lambda bar because mfcq and all these are not holding here so uniqueness or lcq type things are not holding here so uniqueness and all this one can one can surely forget so then to test this thing is a extremely difficult thing so basically to think that i will solve the kkt formulation the mpec formulation mpcc formulation and i'll solve the actual problem is a wrong dream in bi level programming and in bi level programming that is why you really have to go separate now you look at this problem it's a very simple problem again 
uh, quadratic optimization convex on the top. This is a fully convex problem. And look at the lower level problem, linear. Absolutely simple problem. So here, for every x that you give from the top level, there is a unique solution for every x, depending, of course, on x. Okay. And this Lagrange multiplier for x strictly greater than 0 is unique, for x strictly less than 0 is unique, but for x equal to 0 is not unique. It's a convex all of these two points. It's a line segment. Here, x bar, y bar equal to half of is the only global solution of OVP, and there is no local solution. Now, half of 1, 1 is also a local solution of the KKT reformulation. That can be shown. Now, 0, 1, 0, 1 is a local solution of the KKT reformulation. But 0, 1 is not a solution of the OBP problem. Why? Because once you have x equal to 0, your Lagrangian multiplier set has infinite elements. So with 0, 1, with 0, 1 Lagrangian as Lagrange multipliers is a local solution of KKT reformulation. But 0, 1 with 1, 0, with this extremity, with this Lagrangian multiplier vector is not a local solution of the KKT reformulation. That is why 0, 1 is not a solution. So any solution, if you take this solution, the idea was that any solution, local solution that I find of the KKT reformulation should give me a local solution of uh, the original uh, bi-level programming problem. Actually, many, many application papers in bi-level programming just does that. But they are largely wrong because they do not check this very important fact. This is an extremely, extremely important fact. So there are many other things in that paper which actually deals with this link. So this is a very, very important link. So because of this failure, 0, 1 does not become a solution of this. But if you just blindly do it, you can just take this as one, this also as one solution of the bi-level programming problem, which is, which is really not true. So that's end of part one, which is the structural issues. And part two is optimality conditions. People might say, okay, optimality conditions are, come, you know, this is kind of, it has become a very bad game. People start writing optimality conditions for too many things and it doesn't really work out. I agree because in general, in, optim in optimization, when we write, try to write optimality conditions, we always try to seek a path to make it in the format of the Karush Kuntakar conditions. That's, that's the style that we have actually, uh, put in with for so many years. So, but bi-level programming is a very, very special kind of problem. There are two levels. And how to integrate these two levels to get one particular format of optimality condition, which looks like a KKT one is not a simple task. So this part of the talk is, would be rather abstract in some sense that here we are just trying to figure out that can a necessary optimality condition be written down? Can a KKT lookalike come here also? Or such things are difficult to do. So I've essentially, uh, this part of my research has been with uh, Boris, uh, Stephen, and Se Sebastian Loese, who was a student of uh, St Stephen Dempe. So we again start with uh, this standard thing. And we'll take the special case of x equal to rn just for simplicity. And let us look at this very basic reformulation, which we had figured out. Hmm. Now, this n k x y, because here both x is changing and then y would change, can be written down as a set valued map itself. That whenever y is in kx, this would give me n k x y, or x it is an empty set. Right. Now, this is, these are called generalized equations and there are several nice results about generalized equation. The idea was when we started working on this to the big, very beginning that 
we thought this is a good way to actually put in tools of variation analysis and ideas from generalized equation to see what kind of abstract formulation of optimality conditions we would do because this is an abstract write up and so it's an abstract formulation finally so here of course we have to talk about variational geometry which i am not going to talk about because all of you are super experts in this so i'm just completely getting out of this uh, co-derivative business and all this write up which i can obviously profitably use nadia if you don't mind for some other talk which will be there will be more graduate students uh, the key idea is here to use this optimality condition. This is a very standard optimality condition. N is a limiting normal cone. And this is this standard optimality condition is known uh, very well to all optimizers or anybody who has worked in non-smooth analysis would know this condition. But if you want to now write it down, particularly for this problem, then you have to devise a kind of constraint qualification. Here, the constant qualification that we have used is it looks very much like as if I am trying to do something with uh, like uh, write down a basic constant qualification type structure. But no, here the structure has got nothing to do with the normal cone, just the normal cone. Because if you just write the normal cone here, then basically that will fail. And that is why the co-derivative of the normal cone that, sorry, this will be y minus grad y of f x bar y bar. I missed this, so, uh, sorry for that. So this is, the, this is the type of basic normal cone where co-derivative enters into the structure. And then the optimality condition would take a form where co-derivative of the normal cone map naturally enters the structure and twice differentiability of the function has to be assumed. See what happens when you want to have more simple conditions, simple type of sim more simpler looking or more natural looking optimality conditions, second differentiability or second level de derivative has to be present for the lower level objective. Otherwise things can just get into problem because then you have to assume certain conditions which are pretty tricky. So let us now consider the special case where you have kx equal to k. Very recently, there was a paper uh, on polynomial bilevel programming where the objective and upper and lower objective are polynomials, but non-convex. And uh, there, when they had set kx equal to k, they called it simple bilevel programming, but that's not what is now known in the literature, but I do not know what why they did it. Uh, so now here, let us assume that rank of this matrix, this matrix means first I differentiate with respect to Y and then that is differentiated with respect to X. So finally you get a matrix. So rank of this matrix, if that is full rank M, then you get a much more simpler looking optimality condition split up into two parts with individual or partial derivatives, partial gradients here. But what remains constant at, at one level is the appearance of the co-derivative. Now one can say, okay, these are abstract optimality conditions. So having a co-derivative is not a very big issue because it, you can have a co-derivative, what's the issue? But when you want to really test these conditions in some way, co-derivative calculations are very, very tedious only very few cases. There's a Rene Hendrian and his group has some papers on which they have tried to compute co-derivatives because what happens, you compute the co-derivative of one complicated function in terms of the co-derivative of a simpler function. But that co-derivative computation business remains. But how do I get rid of this? That once you want to do, suppose you express Kx in terms of this convex inequalities. Can still I get rid of this? Can co-derivative be calculated? I do not know whether directly it still can be, we can get rid of this. We can to a certain extent, but there is some simpler co-derivatives would come in. I have not been able to do it after working so long. 
Then the value function approach, this value function reformulation, that again becomes handy. Here I'm just writing phi x because that is a traditional way people in, I would prefer to write vx, but stand, standard is to write phi x, so I'm writing phi x. So this is a work part based on my work with uh, Dempe and Mudokovic in 2007. Uh, I remember Regina was the associated editor of this paper. Uh, and uh, this is called a VOBP, so value function reformulation of OBP. And this is equivalent, this is actually an equivalent problem. There is no issue like the KKD formulation, you had issues, there's no issue here that, okay, it may or may not have a link. You have to have, you have to verify very strong conditions to get into the, get into this, uh, get in going from one to the other. There's no thing, no, nothing like that. It doesn't matter. This problem is always equivalent, whether in terms of local solution or global solutions to the original problem. So let's look at the value function approach. And here we need a condition called partial calmness. This nobody even, in fact, I am now referring a paper on bi-level programming. This partial calmness condition is something which people have, have un been unable to get rid of from bi-level programming, at least from the optimality conditions literature. I have no idea. This was a condition uh, by, given by Ye and Jane Ye and Zhu in 1995 in optimization. And uh, there, the condition was, instead of considering the actual uh, value function reformulation, consider a part of version of it. And we will say that, okay, that uh, this OBP is partially come at any point X bar, Y bar, which is feasible to OBP. If there's a constant M greater than zero, an open neighborhood X bar, Y bar, open neighborhood of x bar y bar is zero because x bar y bar zero is a solution of this problem also. Such that for any feasible set of that neighborhood and, and feasible to this problem, one would have this inequality to be true. It's a kind of calmness inequality, uh, but it's trying to make some strange balance. If you ask me, do you really understand the motivation of this? My simple and honest answer is no. I don't understand the motivation of this, of this, but I only like that this has a very intriguing result behind it. The result is that if there is a local minimizer of OBP, then OBP is partially come at that point, if and only if there exists a lambda strictly greater than zero such that this holds. And the converse of this, it's, it's a, both were results. So I first wrote the necessary part and then the sufficient part. So here are some examples where one can be seen. For example, this example, you can easily see a very simple f, x, y, and lower level and upper level. This k is fixed. You can very simply show that you can construct the phi x, and then you can write down the penalized problem. And then you can show that whatever be the lambda, this is the solution of the penalized problem where x and x bar y bar one zero is also the solution of this problem. So what it shows that okay at the solution, this problem is partially calm. But if I tweak this thing a bit, that is instead of k equal to zero one at the lower level as constant, I take k equal to r and just tweak this a bit and have the objective function tweaked a bit instead of y square by two, y minus one square by two you will see that the penalized problem for any lambda has a solution of this form, while the original problem still continues to have a solution one zero. So this is a, just by little tweaking, partial calmness is lost. So there's no way still, till date, to really say that I have a absolutely guaranteed condition that under these situations, you'll always have partial calmness, means this penalized problem will always have a, will always have the same, give the same solution as the one of one, one of the real problem. That is, that is not there. And I have tried, I myself have tried it a lot of times, but I have no, yet found no clue to do, do that thing. So here is an example where partial calmness can hold even if the lower level is non-smooth. So let's, 
And then there is this upper level irregularity, lower level regularity, standard Manga Sarian Typhoon, which things which is can be applied to lower level separately, upper level separately. See, the whole thing is that jointly you can't do the things, but upper level and lower level separately you can apply. And then the necessary optimality conditions where this, this S has to be assumed to be in or semi-continuous. So you might wonder, do you really believe that uh, solution sets are lower semi-continuous? The answer is really not. You This will be lower semi-continuous if it becomes singleton at X bar. And that was that is the connection that I want to find, figure out with what I had written in uh, this work in 2017 in the link between the solution of OBP and the uh, B problem BPO. So that single valuedness, because if it is single valued at the point X bar, then obviously it is inner semi-continuous at X bar, Y bar. So that thing is somehow, there's a somehow some intriguing link between this optimality, this assumption that is needed here for optimality, and that that is needed to link OBP with the solution of OBP with BPO. So then you get some very, very complex looking solution. The N plus one, whenever I see an N plus one somewhere, I know Carathe one has to understand that Kara Theodore theorem has been applied. So there was a convex hull because you have to deal with Mudokovic stuff. So this is optimality condition. I will not get into the last thing, which I would call my last uh, study on optimality condition. After that, I didn't go back and study uh, this uh, much deeply. Uh, it's because I got interested in something else in bilevel programming. It's a fully convex problem. So here I am assuming every nice thing that fxy is smooth and jointly convex. Lower level is also jointly convex and k is a compact convex set. So this is a very, very good situation. So what you have is a problem with a DC constraint. So DC is a local ellipsis function because, because once you take K is compact, this phi X is a finite valued convex function. So it's a ellipsis function and all those things. So it's a nice problem, not very hard compared to what we were discussing. So it's very important to understand that from the point of view of economics, a solution of a bi-level programming problem is a kind of equilibrium. It's not an optima to them, like but it is optima to us, but they essentially look at Give, give it give an, give an explanation in terms of equilibrium of a game, right? So you, the value of a game. So in this problem, let us start trying to, because I have some 10 minutes, I'll try to explain this problem. The steps by which I've used to get to the optimality condition. So when you have a problem like this, it's not very difficult. It's pretty standard to prove that if X bar Y bar is a solution, then this system, where this is the Boolean tangent cone, cannot have any solution. This is a standard thing. And I like this approach because I somehow enjoy applying the Gordon's theorem of alternative. And that is, that is really a powerful tool in understanding optimality. So once you have that, you can write a optimality condition of this form. This is just an application of Gordon's theorem of, of uh, Gordon's theorem of alternative for the convex case. Of course, these are all convex functions in the direction, directional derivative and the clock derivative. And then when you apply a support function calculus, this is obvious, uh, then you get an optimality condition, a fridge zone optimality condition on this form. So this is the fridge zone optimality condition. Now, the question is, how do I set lambda not is not equal to zero? What kind of condition I need? So if I want to say, okay, can the basic constant qualification, which we know, which is essentially the MFCQ in this setting, which, and this basic constant qualification comes from the, the celebrated book of Rockefeller and Wett's variation analysis. So if I want to go by the, what is called the basic constant qualification, the basic constant qualification should be like this that for any lambda one greater than or equal to zero, this has this inequality as a solution with lambda one 
this intuition has a solution with lambda one greater than equal to zero. Then the only possible solution is lambda one must be zero. Now, this will only hold with lambda one equal to zero. But does does it really hold in our case? That's the question that we want to ask. So here I want to. This is our standard result that uh, I can write this as a product of the partial sub differentials, and then I can write down this. This this whole thing into two parts. When I put lambda equal to zero, I'll be one. Basically, if I take this this thing, I can write it down into two parts. Now, when I wrote the paper, I missed something, so which I should tell here. So what I did that because x bar y bar is a solution of the original problem, so y bar is a solution of the lower level problem at the parameter x bar. So then. This is the optimality condition, so zero must belong to here, belong to this set. So it, it doesn't matter if I choose lambda one equal to zero; I can always get zero belonging to this. The zero would always belong to this set, so I can choose lambda one strictly bigger than zero. But you might ask me the question: What about this? That I failed to mention in my actual writing of the paper, actually, that which came out in the proceedings of the Simpa School. Uh, so. Uh, what happens is that if you look at it very carefully, it's just simple working with convex definitions of convex subgradients. Is that del phi x bar is an element as is is contained in this. So once you do that, once you know that, then you know that zero would also lie here. So I can always choose lambda one to be strictly greater than zero, which means my BCQ fails. So when you have completely smooth data here, I do not have smooth data. Please understand, I am not taking smoothness here. I am not bothered about smoothness of the lower level. Uh, upper level also, I am not bothered about the smoothness. But even if you keep smoothness of the upper level, doesn't matter. I have just kept it for simplicity. But lower level, I am not taking any smoothness. In my paper with uh, Boris and Stephen in 2007, that I had smoothness at every level. So that was done very differently. Now here, you see. So in both cases, I can choose the same lambda one strictly greater than zero and still get this inequality, this inclusions holding true. So MFCQ type thing does not hold here. BCQ fails, and this is a better way to actually demonstrate MFCQ would never hold in the case of. Uh, bi-level programming problem, then writing it down as a KKD reformulation, because that is that the, the problems are not same. Now this is my last, just for a joke, don't mind. This is my last uh, theorem on uh, optimality conditions for bi-level programming. After that, I I have never written any any theorem. So here we assume S to be inner semi-compact. Inner semi-compact is a much more relaxed condition than. Inner semi-continuity. Uh, any local, if you have a this S to be locally bounded around X bar, this condition would actually satisfy this this definition. And so it's not a very bad thing. You can have um, solution sets having local boundedness. That's okay. One thing that I couldn't get rid with rid of is partial calmness. There was a paper by Henry on and Suoviek uh, in 2012. I think they got they used calmness. They kept everything the lower level to be smooth. In our problems, the lower levels are not smooth. So they kept they throw a partial calmness and brought in normal calmness. But again, they needed second derivatives at the lower level. So which we all wanted to avoid. We wanted to see at what level of generality we can go. So once you do that, you get an optimality condition. Is this the interesting part? Is this that? Partial calmness would always hold if your problem has a fully linear data. That's already proved by Ye and Zhu. But inner semi-compactness can fail. For example, if I take this kind of situation where this capital F is a function, linear function like this, where this parameter A is not equal to zero, then if inner semi-continuity holds, then because partial calmness would hold anyway. So inner semi-continuity, if it holds, then when assuming that K is also given by linear functions. So then what would happen is that 
if you write so this optimality conditions would hold and if you write down the first optimality condition it will immediately give me a equal to zero which which is a contradiction which means that the inner semi compactness may not hold even if you have linear data so the bilevel programming is extremely tricky even in the best of situations conditions don't happen but even in not the best of situations you can get get what you want for example here you have a non linear problem where f has if f is kind of a top function right here so for y it's y square for y less than equal to zero zero between zero and one then y minus one whole square it's like it's a it's a kind of uh top function so now uh like this here now if you use a penalized function you will immediately see that the penalized function actually has a solution x bar y bar equal to 0 0 for any lambda and which is also the solution of this problem so for this non linear convex problems your partial calmness actually holds and hence the optimality condition would also hold because this is a this is obviously this is a inner semi compact map set valued map because it's constant for every x so with this i end the talk here so anything that you want to ask me so here i have not spoken about what what others have done there's been a lot of literature on there's a huge work by Dem, dempe and his uh, students patrick mehlij dempe and loshe dempe and uh, alan zemko alan zemko is a very brilliant uh, researcher in this field and uh, excellent researcher and then that he has got a huge amount of work but i didn't have i didn't much Uh, dwell on that as i told you it's a personal journey so i think it's time that uh, after working for since 2004 on this area i think it's good to take some stock of what i have done okay thank you so much joji so uh, i'm just wondering if there are questions so remember that uh, after this session immediately after this session we'll have a tutorial so okay vera has a question so vera please hello Uh, yes. Uh, hi, Jody. Thank you very much hi. for the interesting talk. Um, I have a horrible question because it's not directly related to maybe more deep things that you were talking about. Uh, what I'm curious about is that I was working with an economist on uh, mechanism design, and it's always a bi-level problem, right? So um, one or a game, right? If you want, so one person sets the prices, um, or a company sets the prices, and uh, customers. You know, make a decision whether they buy a product in a sense, right? So, the the company is X is choosing X, and the customers are choosing Y. And then, when we were talking about uh, the pessimistic and optimistic formulations, somehow for the economist, uh, he said it was irrelevant because he can always adjust the price to force um, the customers to make that specific choice. So, in fact, for that particular problem that we were working on. The situation was very similar to that example that you showed when you don't have a pessimistic solution but somehow right if if you, if you if you shift a little bit if you accept a slightly suboptimal solution if you prescribe x then you force um the other player to choose the solution that you want so i'm wondering if there's any specific structure that guarantees that or if you know of any result yeah, that guarantees well, I'll, it. i'll get you a paper of just let me it's here i'll just have a I'll just tell you the reference. I don't know whether you have seen it. I'm sure you must have. Uh, let me see whether I have the reference. The standard pessimistic bi-level problem by Lampariello, Simone Sagratella, Oliver Stein, 2019, Siam J Optimization, Volume 29, uh, uh -huh. page uh, for number two, page one six three four one six five six. it's uh, it's called the standard pessimistic bi level programming problem they are exactly talking what you are telling about see economists if you look at the uh, pap this paper called moral hazard uh, the theory of moral hazard and uncertain um, unseen uh, decisions by by uh, james mirless he actually constructs a problem which comes out of the real structure and the interesting part what he does is he actually solves that problem it doesn't get into this uh, optimistic pessimistic game Uh, optimistic pessimistic game is essentially optimizers are telling okay this is two ways where you avoid using correspondences in uh, and he actually solves the problem 
And there is another paper I've seen by Merlis where the lower level problem is non-convex, but because of the particular structure, he is able to solve the problem. In the economics, this actually happens. But what, what I, I would say, should, because I'm also reading this paper now, it's a very interesting paper. Uh, they are actually talking about how to handle what you are exactly telling Vera. That, okay, even if you don't have a solution, push it up, a little change, part of the thing a little bit. So I just also saw a paper, for example, I gave that example that even case of global optima where Slater condition fails. So for a given X, if the Slater fails, then there's no link between the MPCC mm -hmm. and original problem. We are talking global optima, where the link should be clear. But I saw a paper where they are doing like, okay, instead of uh, having a situation where the thing can fail, I make a situation where Slater would never fail. So it's part of the problem, original problem. And then you solve the sequence of part of problems. Mm -hmm. See what happens. Where does it lead to? So that there's a nice paper which has come up on that kind of topic. But this paper is very good. On the, that, that is exactly the type of problem that they're talking of. Oh, thank you so much. That's really great. I'm, I'm sorry I'm being very selfish with my questions here. No, no, so, absolutely fine. A pessimistic problem is very difficult. I, am, I think I am also studying this now because I want to also look at it and work with some economists on this. There's so much of uh, problems like this. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, Vera, you have more questions? Um, Actually, no, 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 okay. So yeah, I, I think that you are working in bi-level programming. I'm delighted to know this. Uh, I can't really see any um, hand. Um, so um, I guess we can then uh, thank Joe Deep and